We've done a lot on this show to expose the many insidious tentacles of the Russian propaganda machine. From the RT News Network, which is now effectively shut down in our country, to a small town radio station in Liberty, Missouri, paid to regurgitate Russian disinformation via broadcasts of Sputnik News. But there's a far less covered story about a well-known, widely respected international news service that feeds articles, photos, even videos to the biggest news outlets around the world partnering with a major Russian news agency. The news entity is Reuters. They're paid by newsrooms in the United States and around the world for their reporting. Most news agencies don't have the staff or resources for on-the-ground international reporting, like in Ukraine, for example. So they hire companies like AP or Reuters. Reuters has thousands of reporters and hundreds of bureaus from London to South Africa to Moscow. They do some Pulitzer Prize-winning journalism, but they have somehow partnered with Russian news agency TASS, which has been accused by U.S. authorities in the past of collaborating with the Russian foreign intelligence to gather sensitive information on U.S. financial markets and even gave cover to KGB agents during the first Cold War. These are some of the headlines on TASS's website today. Quote, over four and a half million civilians kept by Ukrainian neo-Nazis as human shields and Ukrainian military is firing at civilians in protected zones of Mariupol. Pure propaganda. So why would a news organization like Reuters stay associated with and give a platform to Russian propaganda? The content produced by TASS is aggregated and disseminated via Reuters' paid news service, Reuters Connect. News Nation subscribes to it. We obviously don't use anything from TASS except in this segment to show you some recent alerts from them. Quote, Russia will not allow Ukraine to obtain nuclear weapons. And Russia's defense ministry says 59,000 people have been evacuated from Ukraine's Mariupol in past three days. That's as Russia ramped up its bombardment of civilian targets there and continues to decimate the city. And Russia's defense ministry calls on nationalists in Ukraine's Mariupol to lay down arms, offers safe passage out. Now, Reuters' own employees have been complaining about it. Politico reports, quote, multiple journalists at Reuters told Politico that staff are frustrated and embarrassed by the company's continued partnership with TASS. And employees saying, quote, it was an embarrassment when the partnership was signed two years ago. Now it's just wrong. And the silence from the top is worrying and maybe the worst part. It's not just wrong. It's dangerous. Reuters responded to Politico in a statement. In part, they said, quote, Reuters Connect is a business-to-business -business marketplace that allows access to Reuters news content and content from more than 90 third-party providers, including TASS. All third-party content is clearly labored, labeled and carries a disclaimer that states that Reuters does not guarantee the accuracy of or endorse any views or opinions expressed in this asset. They're a news organization, right? That makes it fine? Whether you put a disclaimer on the content or not, you're giving a platform as a news organization to pure misinformation and disinformation. You're lending your name to legitimize this quote unquote news agency, which is exactly what Russia wants. Here's an example of why this is so insidious. TASS wrongly reported false claims by Russia that Ukrainian President Zelensky had fled Kyiv for Western Ukraine at the start of the, West, the Russian invasion a claim that was then spun and spread by the rest of the Russian propaganda machine. Of course, that's not true. So it seems to me disingenuous for Reuters to say, hey, we carry the content. Not that story, but others, we, we charge you for it, but we don't know if it's actually true, but that's not our problem. Except it is, and no, this is not censorship. This is disavowing disinformation. A news organization Say, representing that we don't know, but this is factually untrue from those who actively want to discredit and retaliate against the United States and the West. Joining me now is Joshua Tucker, director of New York University's Jordan Center for the Advanced Study of Russia and co-director of the Center for Social Media and Politics. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. So are you as surprised as I was by this partnership? And you follow this stuff much more closely than I do. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite surprised by this, and I'm also quite surprised by the fact that it's still going on. Uh, we've been living in an era in the aftermath of the in the aftermath of the sanctions, 
where we've actually seen the sanctions being, uh, where, where often when we think about sanctions, we think about companies trying to you know, avoid sanctions, get around them. But we've actually been seeing recently uh, that companies are getting out ahead of the sanctions and companies are leaving Russia, not doing business in Russia, simply because they don't want to be associated with Russia. And I think this is because we're living in this more digital social media world where companies have learned that it's really easy for consumers to bring pressure upon them. Now you go right. to the Reuters situation, right? And we find that this is broken by Politico a couple of days ago, and it's still actually going on. So this is actually right. kind of a huge surprise to me that this is happening. Well, and, and and why do you think Reuters is doubling down on this? Well, you know, we have all these partners and we don't necessarily uh, verify its content. I mean, it's almost laughable. I mean, I, I get their response, right? I understand their position that they partner and they just sort of send out this information and they're not necessarily putting their names on it. But when it comes to the Russian propaganda, you would think that maybe they would say, hey, you know what, maybe it's time to pull it. Yeah, I, I don't know why they're doing it. And actually, I think it's worse than when you set it up. So in the aftermath, when your producer called me this afternoon, Hannah Waite, who's one of the postdocs at the Center for Social Media and Politics, went through some data we had been collecting because of a study we're trying to do on propaganda. We found 79 or 78, at least 78 different instances of this happening since February 1st of Reuters sharing uh, content from TASS. And you said in your open that it was labeled as being from TASS, but we actually didn't always find that. So in at least one case, we found a thing where the API where we were querying this form it originally stored said that it was from TASS. But then when we actually looked at the site, we looked at the story on the Reuters site, there's no mention of TASS at all. And this is also problematic because it can go beyond Reuters, right? You can have other people who would pick up content that's not normally wouldn't want to pick up content from TASS, but would pick up content from Reuters. So we found another instance where a story that we saw that was on Reuters using content from TASS was subsequently picked up by Yahoo as well. Mm. All right, well, look, that's why we had you on the show is because, as I said, you know this stuff better than I do. Um, and I appreciate that clarification. Professor Joshua Tucker, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan, for having me. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.